sisters of glory to God and all the children of God all over the year. As we're coming closer to the end of the year, and actually next Tuesday night will be the last time we're going to meet together here. Mm. And uh, we're going to have a, a four weeks break. But I will continue sending you the messages and emails um, for the four weeks in the holidays so we're going to be in. But as we're coming, as I said, closer to the end of the year, it's just, um, I felt, I spoke so many things about God on the previous weeks. I spoke about God's holiness, the importance to be, for us to be holy as He's holy. I spoke about God is never late. He's always come at the right time. I spoke about the sheep and the goats. I spoke about the ten virgins. I also spoke about we've been sealed by his blood. And I also spoke about how do we walk before a holy God. I also spoke about how we set apart and be sanctified. For us to sanctify ourselves. I spoke about the experience in the peace of God. And there is so many different aspects of God. And I we just I just just a little bit touching. But tonight I'm gonna to speak about the most important thing of God. The love of God for you and me. Amen. Tonight we're gonna to talk about the love of God. You and me. You know, in the Bible it talks about the love of God 302 times. It's written in the Bible about His love. And tonight we're going to begin with uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. And we have known and believed the love God has for us. The Apostle John knew about the love of God. Even in the last supper he was had his head on Jesus' heart and listening to the beat of his heart. John knew about God's love. John knew Christ. And it's important that you and I will also understand the love of God that he has for us. And it's important to know, to know the love of Christ that passes all understanding. Not to talk about it, to know, to experience to walk in that love of, God, of Christ. Because when you understand the love of Christ, when you walk in that love, no demon in hell can come anywhere near you. When you know who you are in Christ, when you know who, who God made you to be, there's no, there is no issues in your life at all. <coughs> God is love. So remember, remember this word, because I'm going to use it as we go forward. God is love, and he who abides in love, abides in God, and God in him. So it's important also that we abide in love towards one another. It's important that we abide to love the neighbor, to love a stranger, to love our enemies. Because as we abide in love, we abide in him and him in us. It's important that we understand that, that perimeter that God has for us. And also... It's important that we understand. The Bible talks about 763 times. Appearing in the Bible talks about to know. It's important that we know His love that He has for us. Because everybody says, yeah, yeah, God loves me. No, no. It's important that you understand how much He loves you. That you experience the love of Christ in your life. To a point that you go like, I, I, I know when He... When he first came to me, when he saved me, 
For the first three months, my apartment smelled like a florist. For the first three months, I smelled his presence in my apartment. I felt his love coming towards me with like a... <gasps> experience and know his love that surpasses all understanding. It's important that we read the Word of God and read the right teachings about who God is and how much He loves you. As a young Christian, I wanted to experience His power of God like the larger did. I wanted signs, wonders and miracles to be happening for me in the first week that I was experienced. But then I want to take you to a little scripture in First King chapter 19, verse 11 and 12. First Kings chapter 19, verse 11 and 12. Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountain and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in an earthquake. And after the earth cried, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small voice, a still small voice. He spoke to him in a still small voice. He spoke to him in a whisper. After he done all those miraculous signs and wonders, Elijah, he got so scared. Of this woman, the king's wife, and he ran to the mountains and calls at him, "What are you doing here?" He <laughs> was small voice. What are you doing here? But at the same time, he loved him so much, he said to the raven to feed him. In the middle of all that. But I just wanted to show you that it's important that we hear the still voice of him. Not to be full time busy running everywhere and doing everything and everything and never have a moment for ourselves to stand before him and be quiet. Understand the love that He has for us. The, other, the Apostle Paul understood the love of Christ when he prayed to the Ephesians. And let's look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 and 19. Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith, that you might be rooted and graded in love, might be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, and the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you might be filled with the fullness of God. That Christ might dwell in your heart through faith. It's important that we allow faith to work in our lives. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It says Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So it's important that we read the word of God. So then therefore we can allow Christ and we have faith to understand who Christ is in our lives. And to dwell in our hearts. And to be grounded and rooted as I spoke about last week. Rooted and grounded in his love. 
It's important that we are being rooted and grounded in His love. So then we may be able to apprehend with all the other signs, all the other brothers and sisters, comprehend how wide, how lengthy, how deep, and how high is He love, is He love towards you. Amen. How wide? How high? How deep? And to be grounded in His love. I don't know about you, but I've gone through a lot of hero kinds in the last seven years of my life. And the fact that I'm still standing with Him is a, it's a miracle. But in this, in this when you understand who you are in Christ, when you understand how much God loves you, then no problem on this earth can bring you down. Amen, brother. Yeah. That is the important to understand. Okay. With all the saints, the width, the length, the depth, and the height of His love towards you and me. And to know See, again, the word, the word know, I said it before, to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge. And to, so that you might be filled, that the only then, if you know all that, the only then you can be filled with the fullness of God, be filled with God on you. So as we walk, that's what God wants to do. He wants to walk with you and me. He wants to walk with us on this earth. It touch the people around us. Let's also read Romans chapter 8, 32 to 34. He who did not spare his own son, but belittled him up for us, Delivered him up for us all. How should he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is good, it is God who justifies. And, and who is he who condemns? It's not Christ who died, and furthermore, He's also risen, who even in the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. He did not, he did not spare his own son for us. Mm. I don't know about, about you, but I would not spare my sons for no one. But God spared his son. For us, yeah. for us sinners, because we were sinners, we were untouchable when He came to us. So, how we need? Who can bring? Who and this? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It's He who justifies. It's He who said He called us, He saved us, and justified us by the blood of Jesus. No one can bring any charge against you and me. That is how much God loves you and me. If we just, if we could just comprehend. And not only Jesus died for us, furthermore, He risen, and He's the right hand of God, and what He does, He intercedes for us, day and night. When He do something, when He do something wrong, He says, Dad, I'll pay with this one, for this one, with my own blood. And this is for us. Thank you. Paul, Paul presents a series of questions with answers that God is not the cause of our problem. As it says in Romans 8.33, the same, the same scripture. Who should bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who, justif it is God who justifies. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? 
He had already justified us. Does that mean that we should be living in sin? Of course not. If you know who you are in Christ, you never sin again. Christ never sinned. He doesn't know anything about sin. And we are like him. As he is, so are we in this world. He was the first raised from the dead, and then after, every one of us was risen from the dead. We are born again. We are raised from the dead. That we're not all of us. We are like Christ. The difference is that he knew who he was. We're not fully convinced. Actually, it's hard to, to actually, it's very hard to be convinced that God Almighty chose me. To make him his son, to make me his son. Before the creation of the world, he chose me. And made us in his own image. And he loved us so much. Wow. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. For we are His workmanship. Okay. Let's not despise the work of God is doing in our lives. Let's not get upset when God's trying to prune us and, and, and put us where need, we need to go. Let's embrace that what the change he wants to make in our lives. Let's embrace that because we understand how much he loves us and he wants the best for us. It's important that we embrace the change he's trying to make in our lives. Not fight him. Not allow the flesh to fight him. It's important that we understand how much God loves us and how much he wants to do for us and through us. So we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus to do good works, yeah. which God prepared beforehand, and we should walk in them. You know how many people that I've seen the last few years not fulfilling their purposes in their lives? Many people. Many people been deceived, thinking. That what the devil has to offer them and what the world has to offer them it's better than what God has for them. And when I, and when I knew, I was, I was only told, I want to remember his name, he died four days ago. Young man, 30 years old, young man, been saved. Never made it because the drugs took over him, destroyed him. Deceived. If you don't, if you feel that you don't measure up, you must look at your heart condition. Don't blame God. You have to look at your heart's condition, where your heart is at the moment. And the question is, do you allow God to work in your heart? God, I got it. God, he, he will not interfere with your will. And I, I remember when I was first got saved, I had so much trouble in my life from the past. And I remember as I was worshiping God one day, I saw my heart was opening up like this before God, like a flower. And then as my heart opened up like this, like a flower before God, <coughs> I saw his hand trying to remove all the thorns inside my heart. Mm -hmm. wow. So, you must not blame God for 
our heart's condition. We <coughs> allow God to finish the work he started in us, to complete the work he started in us, so that he can help us. God still loves us. He loves me. Let's, let's make it individual. God still loves me and accepts me in Christ Jesus my Lord. He loves me and accepts me. He chose me, he accepted me, he saved me, and he accepted me in, in, in Lord Jesus my Lord. So why, <coughs> if God accepts us and he loves us, why do we all, a lot of times we feel condemned and we feel we don't matter up, we feel that we're not good enough and all those things. And a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people who are not even saved, they look at us and say, he's a Christian. to understand who we are and the only thing we can do is by understanding how much God loves us so in Hebrew let's read, let's read also read Hebrews 4 verse 16 let us therefore come boldly to the throne of Christ that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So God invites us on the throne of grace any time of the day, night, afternoon, or morning. Okay? He says, let's therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. He, so he invites all of us to go before his, his throne. So that we might obtain mercy and find grace and favor in the time of need. So every time we have a need, we can go before God and say, Father, help me. I have a need. Daddy, I have a need. Help me, please. I remember when the first time God showed me the blue doors to go into the holies of holies. I was thinking like, I don't know if I can go in there. Because my heart was condemning me. I wasn't sure that I was good enough to be. That's why, that's how important now I go all the time in the throne of Christ before him, <coughs> about there before him and ask him to help me all the time. Because my heart is convinced that I can get help from him if I go before him. So it's important that we understand how much God loves us and to go in a time of need and ask for help. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. God is saying to you, let's go and find the scripture, Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. We're no longer walking by the flesh, we walk by the spirit, because we are the sons of the living God. So therefore, there is no condemnation in any of us who are in Christ Jesus. So, do not condemn yourself or allow other people to condemn you because you got God's workmanship. And He loves you so much so that He put all the condemnation in Christ Jesus on the cross. No condemnation, okay? So... Whoever you are, whoever you are, do not allow no one to condemn you or yourself to not condemn yourself. Or do not allow the enemy to whisper in your ears that you don't measure up. You are a child of God and God loves you so, so much. Let's also read Psalms 118 verse 6. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Is the Lord in our side? 100% is within our side? Okay. So if the Lord is in our side, we shouldn't be in fear. 
What can men do to me? You know, the man was telling to me in Albania, be careful, the coronavirus, you might get sick. I said, I don't rely on earth, you think, here. My help comes from above. Amen. And he says, I saw it. He said, I believe. He said, I saw it. He said, I saw it. As you know, as you left from from Albania, all the people around us got sick. So our help, we are in His hands. You know what? And in the end of the day, if I was to die, I'd be with Jesus. I'd be in a better place. What would I care? Right. So, so don't worry about what people say. You know, the, the man hears us clearly. What can man do to me? What can anybody do to you or any of us? Nothing. The Lord is in our sight. Let's also go back. Let's go to Hebrews 13, verse 5. I'm using all the scriptures just to help your heart to be convinced. That we, God loves us so much. Okay. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be connected with such a things as you have. For he has himself said, I will never leave you, nor will forsake you. So we might boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is my helper. And he promised, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He is with us. And he's making sure the Holy Spirit is with us, living with us. God the Holy Spirit with us. God the Father with us, the Holy Spirit is with us. And will not leave us, nor will he forsake us. And we're going to make sure that we, he takes us to heaven at the right time. So it's important that we allow him to do the work he started in us. So that we can be his vessels here on earth. So we can touch other people who need his help. Now this is a good one, I'm going to read now. Isaiah 49 verse 16. Prophet Isaiah asked this question. Can a woman forget her nursing child? And not have compassion on the son of a woman? Surely they might forget, yet I will not forget you. How hard would it be for a woman to forget a nursing child, a nursing child? That would be almost impossible, right? We all have mothers, and we all know what our mothers have been like, okay? But even so, he says, if this, even so, says, if this woman, he says, has problems, like what is which we know on this earth today, that how many women they on drugs and things, they, they can't look after the children because themselves, they're in a very bad place. Okay? He says, if any the mother forgets about the child, says, by says, God says, I will never forget about you. Amen. Wow. Now that's a bold statement from God, okay? The love that He has for us. Let's also read John 6, 39. This is the will of the Father, 
who sent me, that I, that of all he gave me, I should lose nothing, but should rise that up to the last day. God is not willing with the scripture here to lose not even one person that he called to be saved. He's not willing nobody to be lost. He does, he's not willing any of us to be lost. God, God is not willing any of us to perish. God wants every one of us to fulfill our destiny in Him. God, He wants us to fulfill His purpose for our lives on this earth. And the only person who's stopping Him doing that is us. us. Thank you, sister. Us. It is us. Okay. And not only that, but we have someone an advocate, let's go first John chapter 2 verse, verse 1. My little children, these things are right to you, so that you might not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one, the righteous one. So even he says, John said, the Apostle John says, don't sin, but if you sin, we have an advocate speak to the Father, on the right hand of the Father, and like I said before, Father, he's mine. Please forgive me, Father. He's mine. He speaks on our behalf. Let's now also go back, let's go to John chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews whom believed him, If you buy my word, you are my disciples, indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When you continue in the righteous teaching, when you, when you hear the right teaching, the Word of God, and you learn the Word of God, and walk in the truth, His truth will set you free. And His truth will make you understand the love of the Father is for you. Amen? Amen. Let's also re look at that, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. This is what the instruction of the Apostle Paul left to Timothy, his son, in the spirit. Be diligent to present yourselves a proof to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's important that we rightly divide in the word of truth. It's important that we understand the word of truth and rightly divide the word of truth. Why is it, that's why it's so important in the churches to have the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the pastors, and the evangelists. So everybody together rightly divide the word of truth and to be diligent with the word of truth. It's important that we know and handle proper the word of truth so therefore we do not get deceived. So therefore we don't walk in the snares of the enemy. In John 17 verse 3, I know the scripture outside. For this is eternal life, to know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is eternal life, my brothers and sisters, to know Him, 
the one true God. Jesus Christ himself. So it's important that we keep ourselves in the love of God, to abide in his love, to meditate in his love, to be like a child resting in his father's arms. Jude 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. Keep ourselves in the love of God. It's important that we are always meditating and we are surrounded by His love. Allow His love to be around us. Allow Him to love us and understand how much He loves us also and be confirmed in the love of God surpasses so all understanding. Keep yourself the love of God. First John four nineteen. We love him because he first loved us. We're only, we're only be able to love him because he first came and loved us. Yeah. He first initially came and loved us. And for us then to turn around and love him back. He came. Jesus. As a husband. To love us so much. Die for us. Show us how much he loves us. So then we can turn around and love him back. He first loved us. So when we add it, let's also look at 1 John 4, verse 8. He who does not love, does not know God. He who does not love, does not know God. For God is love. Now everybody says, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, okay? But it's important. <laughs> They hear yourself. Study yourself and look at the things that you do and say and, and be really understand do you really are who you say you are or you are a hypocrite? I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a hypocrite. Okay, so it's important that, that we look at ourselves. And when we look at ourselves and we're not what we're supposed to be, then we need to change ourselves. Not condemn ourselves, change ourselves and and allow, uh, learn to love the people so he can, the way he loves us. It's important that we love people the way he loves us. He who does not love does not know God. Wow! For God is love. We're coming really towards the end. Let's look at uh, Romans chapter. 8, No height, no depth, no any other created thing should be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No height, no depth, no greater thing can separate the love of God. You know what separates you the love of God? You yourself can separate yourself from, from God. Mm. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Only yourself can, because you don't have the right understanding, can separate yourself from God and you think God is not good for you. Nothing, he says here, can open the whole creation, can separate you. In other words, even when you say I hate you, God, he embraces and loves you. He says I love you. Because he's love. He cannot, he cannot, he cannot be outside himself. Because he is love. The next scripture, that's the scripture that we've got saved for ourselves. John 3 16. And I wrote with my heart. For 
God so loved the world, He gave His one begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. God so loved me and came and rescued me in my own apartment because there was no way in the world that you could take me to a born-again Christian church because my head, Greek man, you know, I was seeing, I thought I knew everything. And I was saying, I'm not going around the doors, I'm going through the, through the wall. That's what the mentality was like. And God, He came and rescued me in my own place because there was no way I could have gone to any, any other place to get saved. He came and rescued me. That's, how, that's what God is, that's what love is for all of us. And now we're going to read the last scripture, but again, I'm going to read this last scripture very, very slowly because this scripture is very, very important. And we're going to read from uh, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8a. Now we all read the scripture in 1 John chapter 4 verse 16, right? God is love. So, where it says, the scripture here says, 13.4 it says, talks about love. We're going to change the word love and we're going to say God. God suffers long and is kind. God does not envy. God does not parade himself. He's not prayer puffed up. He's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek his own. Or is not provoking. Or is not provoking. Think no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and dwells all all things. God never fails. Love never fails. So now we're going to go back and we're, we're, we're going to put ourselves in the area. Now, let's look at yourself when, when you look at that. It says, Love suffers long and it's kind. Do you suffer long and are you kind to the people around you? Love does not envy. Do you feel yourself at times that you envy? Love does not parade itself or is puffed up. Do you feel at times that you puffed up and you parade and look at me? Or am? Does not behave rudely. Do you behave rudely at times? You ask that yourself. Do you, does not seek of your own. Do you only think of yourself or think about the others before you think of yourself? Love is not provoking. Do you, get, do you get provoked all the time if somebody says something to you? Do you think evil? Love does not think of any evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. Does not rejoice in iniquity, in sin. Does not rejoice, but rejoice in the truth. Do we always love the truth? Do you always love the truth? Bears all things. Do you bear all things if you're in a relationship with your wife? Or with your husband, do you bear all things? Amen. Do you believe in all things? Do you hope for all things? Do you endure all things in your life? If you do all that, love never fails. If that's because that's the love of Christ for us. He who knew no sin became the sin for you and me. And now expect us for husband. The husband to love the wife the same way he loved his church. And be, be willing to die for your wife. Because that's how he turned, we turned around and loved him. Because we didn't love him, he first loved us. So as we do that, nobody can resist love. True love, no one can resist true love. But it has to be true love. 
So, finishing with this, and I'm saying, God loves you and me, my brothers and sisters. So it's important that we also love one another and love each other. So let's all together love one another and go out there and love this broken world and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with this broken world and tell them how much God loves them. Because many preachers who went out there, they don't even, people that don't even know the love of God that surpasses all knowledge. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, I ask you, the Lord, that you touch all the people who hear this message, Father God. Touch all the hearts of these people, Lord God. Holy Spirit, I pray that you even now, you go out to the highways and byways and touch all the hearts, all these broken people who are everywhere, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you, Lord, let everyone who hears this message understand your love, Father God, that you have for all your creation, Lord God. God bless your holy name, Jesus. God bless you, Lord God. God bless your Holy Spirit. Let you, your love shine over the people and let your people understand, Holy Spirit, I pray. They open up their ears and eyes of understanding. They might know you, the one true God, in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent.